We're starting college women's lacrosse off with a bang. A top five matchup in Syracuse between two early season rivals, Syracuse and Northwestern today in the Dome. High above Ernie Davis Legends Field alongside two-time towards and finalist Alyssa Murray Cometti. I'm Ian Unsworth. To add a little bit more entry to this matchup, Alyssa, Northwestern ended Syracuse's season last year in the NCAA tournament. It's going to be a great game. Number four versus number five. Can't wait for it to get started. We've got two of the best returning players on either side. For Syracuse, it's Megan Tyrell, last year's toward and finalist, and Izzy Skein back for the Cats. The only two returning to Wharton finalist, Megan Tyrell, a 2022 finalist. She has had back-to-back 100-point-plus -back seasons, which is crazy. And then Izzy Skane returning from an ACL injury. She did not play last season, but will really soften the blow to Northwestern's offense, losing Jill Girardi and Lauren Gilbert. Needed some other members of the band to step up if you're Kelly Amati Hiller, and it was Aaron Quinkendall last year who carried the load. You hear the saying often, usually, it, when someone goes down, it's next woman up. Who will be the next person that can develop and take on a larger role? For Northwestern, it was Erin Quickendall, and Coach Amante Hiller told us yesterday that she's playing her best lacrosse yet. Syracuse had a lot of injury problems last year and hampered them in that tournament matchup, but the Orange have a lot of returning firepower. It's Emma Ward, the sharpshooter from New York, that comes back today. Emma Ward did not play a single game last year. She was injured before games even started. She has been chomping at the bit, ready to get back. She's a huge outside shot, provides a lot of balance to the offense. Meg Tyrell has a lot of control of the ball on the left side. Emma Ward will bring balance to the right. Kayla Trainer hoping for balance in her second season at the helm of Syracuse women's lacrosse. 15 and six last year, lost in the Sweet 16. 15 to 4 that final score her in the orange looking for revenge today on the other side kelly amati hiller one of the most respected coaches in all of college lacrosse 22nd season at the helm of the wildcats and she told us yesterday this is a true rivalry now we've seen each other every year since 2006 we know each other it's a great matchup and i it's something that i hope continues on and on for years two of the best one of the best coaches out there in Kelly Monte Hillier and Kayla Trainer, one of the up and coming great coaches in the game. Kate Mischewski and Samantha Smith for the draw. Mischewski, a preseason toward and watch lister, just came out yesterday. Smith's first season taking the majority of the draws for the Wildcats. Early possession to Syracuse. Here is Megan Tyrell. 78 goals last year. The grad student returns for one final season in Orange. 44, Emma Ward setting the screen. Starting midfield for the Cues, Jenny Markey, Natalie Smith, Olivia Adamson runs on off the box. A bit of Savannah Schweitzer in her second year after transferring from USC as well. Schweitzer dumps it in, Corey shoots and scores! What a way to start for the Orange. First possession, first score. Ian, you said it, what a way to get started, especially for a player like Megan Carney. She's been battling injuries the last two years and can't imagine how good that feels for her. Just a really nice pass off a split dodge to Megan Carney. Olivia Adamson dodging to the middle with her left hand. Northwestern sends a slide, leaving Meg Carney open, slashing across the middle of the eight meter. And I love the shot placement from Meg Carney away from the goalie, bottom left corner that is so high percentage. Carney last year played in 16 of Syracuse's 21 games. Melissa, you mentioned those injury issues, mostly lower body things. She was in and out down the stretch of the season. She was knocked out of the 2021 season with an ACL injury and then last year was never never seemed to be fully 100% but she seemed pretty good there a fully realized Meg Carney Syracuse can go a, a long long way so just over 30 seconds in a solid start for Syracuse and even at the draw Sam Smith wins the second one passes off to fellow sophomores Sammy White Last year's Big Ten Freshman of the Year, she played attack, midfield, and defense all in one season. 
she's one of those players that came on strong really late, gave Syracuse a lot of trouble on the defensive end in the playoff game, and has just really, really evolved. Orange start off in zone as he skeins up top. Here's Boykendall off the wing. Pass inside, and Madison Taylor marks the first tally of the season for Northwestern. The freshman back in the Empire State, and we're knotted at one apiece. When we talked to Coach Amante Hiller, she said Madison Taylor is going to be one of those players, one of those first-year players that makes an impact, and scoring the first goal for your team in this 2023 season is making an impact. Aaron Koykendall, really great vision, head up, looking through the Syracuse zone, finding Taylor on a lefty cut across the middle, and great placement over Delaney Schweitzer's top left shoulder. Kelly Amonti Hiller told us Madison Taylor will do things, great things, right away. Just over a minute into the season, she's already on the score sheet. The freshman from Wanta, New York, in Long Island. Back with both centers. Mischewski, 178 draw controls last season. Led the team, won almost 50% for the Cukes. Wins it herself here. Mischewski looks for the feed and gets it off. Mischewski seemed to have a little bit more control of that one. The previous two had gone off away from her, which really is hard as when you're boxed out to even get a stick on that. Something Kayla Trainer and Kate Mischewski worked on over the offseason, pushing the ball more off the draw, becoming more of the offense. Here's Nat Smith. Ooh, off the post. Wow. Known for that one-on-one -on -one dodging ability, Smith with a burst of speed. Coach Kayla Trainer said she was excited about Nat Smith's progression, and my gosh, that was quite a shot coming off the run. I like that she's willing to take that shot early on in the game. Here's Savannah Schweitzer. Gets some space. Shot deflected. And it's going the cat's way. Barney was there on the chase, but officials rule that Northwestern takes possession. And the Wild Chats. Cats a chance to substitute and clear. Boykendall assisted the first. Now here's Izzy Skane. It's Wharton finalist in 2021. 124 total points for 27 in black. Either the middle deflected. Poikendall still digging. Ellie Simpkins knocks it away. And Delaney Schweitzer with the ground ball. Trail check got a little arm. Syracuse keeps possession. That was a problem for Delaney Schweitzer last year against Northwestern. Started in cage, gave it away twice, was pulled for Kimber Howard. Syracuse moving in transition. Smith again, hitting the gas pedal. Now the Orange will take their time. I think that's something that Syracuse has to be aware of is that quick pressure on Schweitzer. They got, they got a little uh, carried away. She held on to it a little too long. I thought Northwestern had a good check there, but just a little too physical this early on. The ref's trying to keep things under control. Now they're setting the standard of what's going to be acceptable and what's not. And historically, it's a pretty physical game, so it's nice that they are setting those boundaries right away. Carney throws it wildly over the head of Ward. Here comes Taylor. First goal scorer of the season for Northwestern. Here's Emerson Bowling, the junior from California. And it's back to Koykendall. Main distributor on this Northwestern team last year with 37 assists. They lose their leading scorer from a season ago in Lauren Gilbert. Had over 75 talents. A lot of early pressure early on from the Syracuse defense. Maddie Baxter, freshman Superior Clark getting involved up top. When you're playing a zone, Syracuse needs to get on the hands of the feeders sooner. A player like Aaron Quickendall can really 
cut through a zone with her pass and her ability. She's a great passer, so something they have to be aware of. Flag came up for the official on the backside, a three-second violation early on. And a great spot for Izzy Skane to get her first. Strikes are ready. Here comes the shot. The bouncer stopped. Quick reflexes from Delaney Schweitzer to go low. And that's a way to get your first scathe against one of the best shooters in the country. That'll give you some confidence when you know whose stick that's coming off of. No numbers in Syracuse's favor. And Emma Ward will slow it down. Suffered a grade three turf toe injury last year in Syracuse's first fall practice. An injury most commonly found for NFL linebackers who plant one way, have to change direction, and get caught up. Doesn't sound like a fun injury, but glad to see Emma Ward back out on the field. She had surgery. She couldn't put pressure on the toe for two months. Here's Sierra Cockrell all the way to the cage. La Liberty with the stop. Quick stick from the Tufts transfer. Northwestern goes the other way. That's a nice save for La Liberty. Off stick side. She's a lefty. She saw that one all the way in. The Cats move to the offensive end. After quick scores from either side, things have slowed down a bit. White feeds to Koikendall, slashing to the cage, hits the top of the pipe. That's a great cut from Koikendall. She's so aware of gaps in this zone. I think that Syracuse, if I'm Coach DeFleece, I'm saying you gotta be always aware of Koikendall where she is. You see she just splits the gap between those two defenders and gets her hands free for a shot. Nearly got that one in the back of the cage. And that first goal, Koikendall started on the outside and Taylor cut inside to the middle of the zone. Right now, Northwestern knows the weak spots. You know, no matter the sport, it's the same thing in basketball. The way that you beat a zone is through the pass. So dodging won't always work, and Northwestern seems to be really understanding that very early on. On the other side, Northwestern manning up on defense. Baxter back up top to Smith. She's already hit the post once. Got a whistle and an illegal screen. Megan Tyrell on the contact. Megan Tyrell a little out of control there. She's got to stop her feet and set herself. She was out of control and just continued to run into the Northwestern defender there to try and free up Nat Smith. Just dialing it back a little bit. It's hard it's to be expected this early on that both teams are having a little bit of uncharacteristic mistakes. It's first game, a lot of intensity, a lot of expectation. Once everyone settles down and takes a breath, we'll probably see a little bit more come together. Staying up top. Michigander back for her fifth season. From fifth year to freshman, Taylor feeds. Amante shovel shot wide left. Creative and impressive look from Dylan Amante, Kelly Amante Hiller's niece. Quite a little space. Flag on the backside, Northwestern keeps playing. Turn and shoot, deflected. Sam Smith had a quick look and swipes her right there. That'll reset the clock back to 60, so it gives Northwestern a whole minute to get another quality shot off, which for Syracuse, that's a very hard thing to do is to continue to defend for another minute. Pressure still on the orange defense. And here's Koikendall. Stick check and a whistle. Matt Smith in, went over the top of Poikendall's head. Out of control slide from Matt Smith. If she didn't swing her stick, she probably would have been able to get some quality contact on Koikendall and slow her down. So it's just something to rein in. Amati inside, knocks over a defender. It's going the other way. Katie Goodale took the fall. Goodale is a master at drawing charges. Her understanding of space and time and how much of that she needs to give the attacker is really impressive. It's something that she started to pick up last year and clearly is continuing in 2023. 28 caused turnovers a season ago for Goodale. A big miss on the orange defensive end, Sarah Cooper. 
the leader of that defense for multiple years. Cooper will certainly be a presence that they're looking to fill and see someone like Goodale or Chevery stepping in in a role like that. On the offensive end, a lot of faces returning. Carney wraps around the cage. Reset shot clock as Carney fell to the turf. Looks like we got an eight meter incoming. Carney won't be the one to take it. Must have been something off ball as the players were really getting settled in. Savannah Schweitzer right now, the closest to it for Syracuse. <laughs> 10 minutes into the first quarter, season opener for Syracuse and Northwestern. Savannah Schweitzer winds up this free position. Now Liberty had the bouncer covered, wide left, and she got low to save it. Tyrell on the restart. Slide comes up top to Smith. Feed down low. Ward open. She scores. But She's inside the, the crease. crease. Yep. Unfortunate. And a really nice look across the crease from Nat Smith to Emma Ward. I would love to see Emma Ward with her left hand up there. She's so highly skilled. She probably is thinking to herself, I should have done that anyway. It gives her more time and a little bit more angle to get that uh, shot off without coming in too tight on the crease. Two fakes before she got it off. Maybe a bit of overthinking in her first game back. Understandable, you've spent a lot of time away from the, the field. You're excited to finally get that shot off. Sometimes it's easy as an athlete to make a moment more than it really needs to be. Mentioned the loss of Sarah Cooper for Syracuse. Now playing Cooper is in the Athletes United Pro ranks, but some young players that Kayla Trainers excited to see step up. 30 in white and orange, Superior Clark and 16, Coco Van Diver. As Skein wins another shooting space. Two athletic, really fast, physical freshmen. It'll be exciting to watch their career at Syracuse. Schweitzer's already stopped Skein once. This is a fantastic angle. Here comes Skein, quick shot again off the post. If you're Izzy Skein, you just gotta keep shooting. You know you're, you're so close, you know, hitting a shot Bottom left corner off the pipe. You're right there. Just got to keep shooting. It'll come. Behind the back from Koykendall. Over top of the crossbar. Northwestern's hit two pipes already. Syracuse one on the other end. Aaron Koykendall's been the engine early on for Northwestern. Assisted on Madison Taylor's goal, and she's had a couple other good looks for herself. Here is Taylor, the goal scorer. Two-time All-American. Koykendall wraps around the ring. Feeds El Hansen. Back to Koykendall. The bouncer's in. Erin Koykendall never stopped moving, and she found space for the score. Erin Koykendall, she's playing her best lacrosse she's ever played. Impressive goal or coming around the crease. She's confident, she's poised, and she's pacing the offense. A beautiful just finish, no look around to the back pipe. Aaron Quakenall puts the Northwestern Wild Cups up 2-1. Northwestern with the early edge on Syracuse, 2-1 the score. Looking around the world of women's college lacrosse, some great matchups. We had one last night, Alyssa, with two young stars. A really late night matchup. Really fun to watch. Stanford had Virginia on the ropes for a while, but Virginia figured it out after a while. And, you know, Rachel Clark, Ashlyn McGovern, that tandem is just really lethal. The all AC, well, eight freshman of the year last year in the ACC, Clark with four points. How about Delaware State and Howard, too, to HBCUs playing at Dorrance Field? They've been taking over the IL Women Instagram all weekend long. It's been fun to watch them as they are a part of the doubleheader with North Carolina and James Madison. Karen Healy Silcott is a Syracuse alum, so exciting to see her head up that, uh, that uh, team. 
Those games on ESPN Plus all around the ESPN family of networks this year. Over 450 contests of women's lacrosse. Head back to the draw circle after Aaron Koikendall's goal took us to break. koikendall has been the early impact player on both sides. Two points already, a goal and an assist. The Orange have won two of the first three draws. Krzyzewski, a Warwick watchlister, a preseason third team All-American. Won eight and a half draw controls per game last year, sixth in the country. But Sam Smith snaps it for the Wildcats. Taylor to Koykenol, the first two goal scorers of the season. And Northwest, Northwestern gets it started. Haven't seen a whole lot from Izzy Skane yet getting integrated in the offense. She's had two free position opportunities, but not the scoring prowess that we expected just yet. She's had some opportunities, but playing against a zone will limit her chances as a Dodger. A zone, like we were talking about, is meant to be beaten through passing. She is a big time Dodger, so it'll be interesting to see how they get her different looks throughout the game. Here's Skane looking for options. Back off to Koykendall, who is the passer on this team. Took a big step up without Skane last year. Kelly Amante Hill is saying that Skane was a player coach, had an iPad on the sidelines, would go through film during games and practices. Izzy Skane saying that one of the big things about this team last year was me letting them know they're just as good without me on the field. I think as a top player, that's a really humbling moment, but also allows you to really learn more about the game from a different perspective. And the world a little bit of breathing room at the 8 meter. Syracuse sets back up. Maddie Baxter who won gold with the Team Canada Sixes squad at the World Games this summer. Over the ward. Ward ramping up. Cross crease pass. And slights her stop. She was inside that blue circle as well. While well, Liberty made the save and got the whistle. And that's the second time that's happened to Syracuse a uh, crease violation. Something to be aware of for the Syracuse attackers is they've got to give a little more breathing room away from that circle. While well, Liberty, a two-time Division Three goalie of the year. Spent four seasons at Tufts, a three-year starter. Second line of midfielders out for Northwestern. See Dylan Amonti wreaking havoc. Stain with a ripper from the left wing. Schweitzer's there. The goalie competition was an open one early on for Syracuse. And the choice to play Delaney Schweitzer looking good thus far. She's had some early saves. Stuff like that is what really helps the confidence of a, a goalkeeper. It's such a mental part of the game. Syracuse gets it over half field as Koykendall lost her goggles. Nearly thought that she could have drawn a charge there, but they signaled for a blocking call instead. 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Not a whole lot of offense between two prolific offenses last year, but both teams with players ramping up from injuries a season ago, getting back in the field of the game. What can Liv Adamson do with 15 seconds left? She scored Syracuse's first goal a year ago against Stanford and then scored in the last nine games of the season. Carney, turn and burn! <laughs> Megan Carney's got two for the orange and we're knotted up at two apiece. Two for 22. Impressive poise there by Megan Tyrell. She hasn't had that many touches on the ball this game. They're marking her real tightly. As soon as she touched the ball, they send a slide. But they gave her enough time to have her head up, and she found the open player. She has such a connection with Meg Carney. Found her right in the middle, and again, low left corner. Same exact spot where Carney scored earlier. She picked that spot again. Great shot selection. Carney and Tyrell have been rolling together for five years. Known as the Meg Show here in the 315. Carney didn't have a goal in two games against the Wildcats a season ago. One out in Evanston and then the second 
the NCAA tournament, also out in Evanston, but outside. Well, there weren't a lot of goals scored on the Syracuse end in that last no, game. No, there weren't. Northwestern really was so impressive down the stretch in the late season and nearly knocked off North Carolina in the final four. An eight goal comeback for UNC, including five from Sam Geiersbach in the fourth quarter, kept the Tar Heels alive. Five seconds in the first, the whistle as the clock rolls down to zero. And we're even through one quarter. Syracuse strikes first, Northwestern fights back, and everyone settles back in to the 2023 college lacrosse season. Boykindle distributes to Taylor, Northwestern got up, and then Megan Carney struck back right before the buzzer. Two goals apiece for both teams through 15 minutes of play at the Dome. Syracuse and Northwestern tied, and the Orange have some returners back, but they're also missing some key pieces, especially Emily Harrischuk, career leading scorer here at SU. That's a big loss. Obviously, anyone who holds a record at Syracuse is going to be someone that you feel has graduated. But Syracuse ha had experience without her. She had torn her ACL in 2021, so they had known what it was like playing without Harris Juck, but she is a big time scorer. She dropped a lot of goals on the first meeting against Northwestern as well. On the other side, Northwestern loses its leading scorer last season in Lauren Gilbert, and also Jill Girardi, who was so important as a draw taker. They were both dynamic and they worked so well together. Lauren Gilbert had the fastest first step, I, it, I thought in division one last year, and Jill Girardi was just so tough and gritty and combined, they were a lethal tandem. Gilbert had five, and Girardi had a hat trick in that loss to North Carolina we mentioned before the break. And that Syracuse loss to Northwestern to end the Orange season last year, Gilbert had four. Wildcats outscored Syracuse six to two in Mark Stadium and never looked back after that first quarter. Mashevsky and Smith have been out there for every single draw. Five of them in the first quarter. Syracuse took three. And now we're even. And that's what Mashevsky wants back. She had a right in her stick and just misjudged the bounce. The Cats set up on offense. Koykendall and Taylor have scored. Here is Koi Kano, the senior from Spencerport. About an hour and a half away from SU. Koi Kano actually played in front of Gary Gaten Middle School at the Syracuse Nike Cup and played against Emily Harris Chuck. The Nike Cup was a great event. I think I was at the first one ever. <laughs> <laughs> You've got some youth experience with people on this field as well. You went to Kelly Montalino's camps growing up. I did, and when I was asking my parents for a picture. Boykinel almost converts. They reminded me that it was before the age of digital cameras, so that was really a nice reminder to, of where I was at then, a little dating myself. A lot of connections between these two schools, going back to Maryland, where Kelly Amonte Hiller played under Gary Gate. Skane with space. She finds Twine. Izzy Skane is back on the scene. After 98 goals in 2021, she gets her first of 2023. You can't help but smile when you see her fist pump and all of her teammates come right up and give her a big hug. That's a long awaited goal for Izzy Skane. And it, it was really just simple. A slow slide from Syracuse. Izzy Skane, low angle shot, but she placed it perfectly in the top right corner. Just patient and that's gotta feel good for her. See the emotion coming out of the school record holder for goals. It was 98 back in 21. Skane now with 12 career points against SU in now five games. I'd say, hey, that's pretty good, but you gotta keep in mind, Skane averages over five points <laughs> per game in her career. Now four-year starter for Amante Hiller and the Wildcats. 
Serafina Damuno now out opposing Kate Mashevsky. Both these players with some height at five foot ten. How does that help on on a draw? Well, the ball goes up if you can reach it and you're taller than the your opponent. That certainly helps. Can you play for a certain type of, of draw where you flick it up over your opponent? Yeah, I think that coaches allow for or teach different approaches. If you have a height disadvantage, they teach you how to get it away and protect the ball in that in that uh, way. But it certainly helps just because you can't control it perfectly every single time uh, as a draw taker. So when it does go straight up, being tall is an advantage. Northwestern's won the two in this quarter, but Syracuse got possession right back. Superior Clark draws a whistle, and the Orange take it to the left end. Have not seen Emma Tyrell yet today, but Ward and Cockrell back after season-ending injuries a season ago. Here comes Maddie Baxter, a burst of speed. The bouncer just wide. That's the first real hard dodge we've seen from Baxter, and Coach Kayla Trainer mentioned that she had developed a lot as a member of Team Canada, so it's nice to see her go hard to cage like that. Said without Baxter, Team Canada doesn't win that goal. She's brought confidence back to Syracuse. Here is Ward, cross crease pass. Carney's already got two for the Orange, but pounded. That was a nice handle by Meg Carney. That pass was behind her. Emma Ward has to get that in front of her, away from the Northwestern defender. Here comes Schweitzer, loses her balance. Check all over, a little head tap from Bowen. And Syracuse gets a 12 meter restart. Ward a space, feet inside, just behind Carney, second chance, Adamson. Right place, right time for Olivia Adamson. We go back to level at three. Right place, right time, but also Olivia Adamson did a great job just following the play, and that's a great example of attackers always staying engaged. You never know where the ball is going to go. She reacted perfectly. It's sometimes pretty difficult to handle a ball that, you know, got a, was a, a missed, but she handled it perfectly, picked it up off the bounce, found the net, and just had a wide open net to be able to shoot on. Why'd she fight herself wide open? There was no one within about five yards of her. Well, I don't think the pass was intended for her. I think it was intended for Carney. It just missed Carney by a little bit. Maybe a, what I thought looked like it got deflected a little bit, which makes that even a more difficult play. But Adamson was able to read the ball and follow the play. The only player to score against Northwestern last year, besides Megan Tyrell, that is, <laughs> in the NCAA tournament, gets one today. Adamson had a really strong end to the season and as a freshman and out now a sophomore having that experience to then carry into the next year is great for confidence. Seems like every year Syracuse has one of those breakout freshmen. Emma Ward two years ago and Adamson last year. She filled out a questionnaire before her freshman year saying that she just wanted to contribute to the team in any way possible. Whether that was garbage time minutes and scout team action. Adamson's chipped in in a big time way. Delay of game green card coming out. That looked like they had called a foul and she hadn't given the two yards of space. Not sure if she didn't hear the the initial whistle or what it what, but you're intended to give space when there is a whistle. So there's the foul. Must have called it there, and then she continued to pursue the ball. Yes, yeah, so you see the official has their arm up acknowledging the foul so that is the reason for that green card so it's one minute player up for Northwestern and Syracuse without a starting defender on that woman down unit Chevrolet in the box up top for Skane slashes through the defense shot deflected Smith with the stick check. And Syracuse a little breathing room after Goodale draws the whistle. Northwestern riding like banshees, but this time a break from the officials. And now Goodale chopped in the face. 
Yellow card for contact to the head on Izzy Skane. A big focus for officials last year, that head contact. And that's an easy call for the official anytime as you see that this, uh, the swipe of the stick knocked Goodell's goggles off. That's an immediate yellow card. Two minutes on the bench for Izzy Skane. And that just seems to be a little bit of a frustration play, you know, a little bit a turnover. As an attacker, you have to stay composed and just ride hard, but without fouling like that. Two players that are probably going to see a lot of each other sitting down. Now we've got another check to the head. Another illegal stick to head contact there on Goodale. She said two in a row, just one trip down the field. So Hannah Kingsfield that time making contact. Doesn't seem like they called it a stick to head contact because I see there's just a one minute penalty. It was a green card. We've got Emma Tyrell on the field for the first time. The fans recognize it too. <laughs> Cheer comes up from behind the orange bench on the left side. And Bianca Chevry's time in the box has expired. So Syracuse, two women up. Kingsfield has 30 more seconds. Skane, a minute 20 left on her violation. Orange looking for their first lead since Carney's first goal just over 30 seconds in. Double fake handoff and the feed to the middle. Emma Tyrell, the sister to sister connection pays off. Back from the season ending injury, Emma scores. It doesn't get more special than that. <laughs> and you can tell they feel it too. Emma Tyrell all smiles. She's waiting in the middle, knowing that the timing is going to come. They get the ball low to her sister, Megan, and just immediately you know that Megan Tyrell has her eyes up. Emma Tyrell timed that perfectly. The ball swings from high to low. As soon as the ball hit, she started her cut. Right hand up, just keeping it simple. And that moment is just so special for them as sisters and the team itself. Megan said her sister works the best off the ball, always finding those gaps to cut through. Well, they've had a lot of practice as sisters to figure it out, so. Just a year apart, played at Mount Sinai High School together, and then came here to the hill. And Megan knew she was coming back after she saw Emma's season-ending injury, which occurred in practice before facing the number one team in the land, UNC, last year. That was a big loss for them and just the way that she plays she plays big in big moments and you can see it right there getting Syracuse on the board in a big game we're not sure how much we're going to see of Emma Tyrell today when we talked to Kayla Trainer yesterday she mentioned that she'll rotate those players who are getting back to game condition in and out just to make sure they can stay fresh for the long haul well, if you look at the last two years for the Syracuse roster, they've been plagued by a lot of significant injuries. So a different approach is necessary than what they had been doing in the past. And that's something Coach Trainer referenced with GPS trackers and many other ways of keeping up to date on their players. Shooting space violation, Dylan Amonti will have the free position. And that's an easy call for the official Superior Clark found herself in the middle of the eight meter right as Dylan Amonti had caught that ball with her hands free. Amonti finished strong last year, a goal and assist in all four of Northwestern's NCAA tournament contests. Not a great shooting angle per se. But she fires right in the stick of Schweitzer. A stick side save, probably in one of the easier ones for Delaney today. If you're going to take that shot as a right-handed player on the far hash, I think it's a lot easier if you hedge towards the middle of the field. So if Dil Dylan Amonti took a couple of steps off that line to gain more angle, she would have had a better chance to get the, the, find the back of the net. Can Syracuse turn it into offense? After 
going to the first quarter break at two apiece. The Orange have gotten it going a little bit on the left end. Liv Adamson and Emma Tyrell, the second quarter scores for Syracuse. No goals for Megan Tyrell yet, but she's got two dimes. So a move back to Ward, middle feed, just wide of Carney. Second chance for Tyrell, push in the back. Double team came immediately and Tyrell felt the contact. And that's an easy call. She's waiting in the middle and that's just too much uh, stick to body contact there by Northwestern. Gives Megan Tyrell a really good opportunity here. Looking right at the mask of Molly LaLiberty. Here comes Tyrell. Stick check from behind and the shot goes over. Closing speed from Northwestern saves a two goal Syracuse advantage. No shot clock reset. Ward's got to do something with 15. She can do that and so much more. Emma Ward back with a statement goal wrapping around the cage. It's great to see all these players that have come back from injury that are starting to get rolling for Syracuse and Northwestern. It's just impressive to see Emma Ward get her hands free. Great shot to the top of the corner. Syracuse up 5-3. Hey everybody, welcome into the ACC Network Extra Studios with Jack Gordon, I'm Luke Schwartz, and this game is not the same one as last year in the quarterfinals. 15 to four loss for Syracuse, but right now the Orange are up. Luke, this is a completely different Syracuse team right now. They look fully energized, better than ever. Syracuse and Northwestern will have two more quarters to play, but stick around for halftime when we're on and talking over the first half. Not necessarily a completely different orange team, but a re-energized Syracuse squad. Megan Carney back at full go. Emma Ward just scored her first goal after missing all of last season. And in the second quarter, Emma Tyrell has been on the score sheet as well. Ian Unsworth, Alyssa Murray, Cometti up in the booth. We've seen Megan Tyrell get face guarded a couple times, but it's opened up opportunities for other players. It's something that you leave yourself vulnerable to. They're sending an early double to her as well, but when she has the ball far away from the cage, that makes those slides so long, and she has the ability to find the open player close to the cage. She is so highly skilled and has such great vision that it does make that a really questionable. Sometimes it's, are we, do we go or do we hold the slide? So it just is situational. A returning to Wharton finalist can cause a lot of problems for an opposing defense. Two assists already for Tyrell. Serafina DeMuno wins it clean. Northwestern off. The Wildcats have won four of the five draws in the second quarter, but have not turned it into much offense. Here comes Izzy Skane. She gets the slide and feeds it off to Bowling. 15 games last year for the junior from California. Here comes Lucy Monroe, a freshman from Colorado. Kelly Amati Hiller changing th some things up on the offensive end. And that's something Amati Hiller always is, consistently does. She never is afraid to make an in-game adjustment. She's so smart and just such an excellent coach that she just makes such good decisions and sticks to them with confidence that her team buys in. Aaron Koikino just threw a bounce pass, by the way. <laughs> from behind the cage out to the left wing. She's creative. It's, she's so fun to watch. Feed to the middle. Looked like Taylor going down. Just lost possession. Maybe tripped over her own feet. Here comes Syracuse. Look at that speed from Northwestern. Bowling gets back. But Baxter still in the turbo to the cage. The save. If you're Maddie Baxter, you want to score on that one. Slow slides. You want to capitalize. But great stop by Low Liberty. Her third save of the day. Showing that Molly LaLiberty, the D3 transfer from Tufts, can hang at the D1 level. She had a 56% save percentage in her career at Tufts. 
that is no matter what the level, that's pretty darn good. And they beat D1 Dartmouth two years ago. Tufts is uh, one of the NESCAC schools at the top of the D3 polls every year. It's a really elite conference, and so you know that she's playing against top talent. Boykin will feed Skane on the wing. Got a little space. That dodging ability of Izzy Skane. Quick left to right with the twitch, the snap of the finger. Just couldn't connect. Here she comes again. 30 on the shot clock. Skane loses out of her stick. Taylor there for the ground. Ball on the bounce shot. Less than two quarters into the 23 season, but Madison Taylor is looking like a freshman star. And that's impressive. A freshman in her first game, and it's against the top five program. She picks up the ball right down the middle and just goes right to the cage. A broken play, but her left hand and a great shot placement. Bottom left corner, Meg Carney's had a lot of success. Madison Taylor's had some too, and that was shooting at that corner. Taylor came in on the inside lacrosse four-star watch list. Won the Palmina player for the best senior on Long Island last year. Played at Wanta High and also for the Long Island Top Guns under Shannon Smith. Shannon Smith, a very successful Northwestern player and my former high school teammate. Small world lacrosse. <laughs> it sure is. Taylor's second of the day cuts the SU lead to one. And the Munoz had some good early returns at the draw. Jenny Markey wins the scramble. And she's off. Doesn't stop after one whistle and gets it off to Ward. Here comes Schweitzer and Adamson out of the box. different faces getting involved for Syracuse early on. Matt Smith had a couple chances early. Hit the pipe. Adamson's got a goal. Harney's got two. Here comes Savannah Schweitzer. The feed to Adamson. Over to Ward. Winds up. This is left. You do not want to leave Emma Ward open for a howitzer like that. That was quite a, quite a shot. She wound up and just pulled it slightly left of that cage. She had more time than I think she realized that she could have taken a step in. Now Ward with the bull dodge right at La Liberty. Northwestern's goalie is pumped and rightly so. She just saw two missiles, neither of them found <laughs> twine. And I think Coach Trainer was down on the sidelines reminding Emma Ward that she's a lefty. Shot that one right into her stick there. And sometimes you're so used to playing against right-handed goalkeepers that even though you're thinking about it, you just sometimes forget mid-game that you're playing against a lefty. Offensive foul on the other end. Gives it back to Syracuse. Seen a couple of those on both sides. The screen's going quickly. Boykendall picks a pocket, but not so fast. That was an illegal screen. We saw Meg Tyrell be called for that as well earlier in the game. And then Aaron Quickendall just didn't give enough space for the penalty to be administered. She pursued before Syracuse had started, so that was why they had stopped the play. Seen green cards for both sides already. Let's see what the officials administer here. Non-engagement warning ruled against the Wildcats. So that was a non-engagement warning. So the next time that that would happen, it would be a green card. But they are receiving a warning rather than being penalized. One green card already to delay of game on both sides. Markey weaves effortlessly through the ride. And let's make Carney get ahead of steam. You see that face guard on Tyrell there. That's Hannah Gillespie. No breathing room for Tyrell. And Gillespie came in as an attacker herself. 
and then immediately they send that double team. So although Tyrell... Tyrell beats three and finds Adamson inside. And that's the risk you run when you send an early double team to someone like Meg Tyrell. She knows immediately to have her head up that the pressure's on, that someone's open, and she's looking the entire time for that slide, and she finds Adamson just cutting right down the middle, wide open, because the Northwestern defense was a little disorganized. Again, to the back pipe, nice, easy finish for Adamson. All eyes on Meg Tyrell, who beat not one, not two, but three defenders. Allie Berkery had her eyes on 18 and White as well. And Adamson a free lane to the crease. Coach Kayla Trainer talks about how calm Megan Tyrell is out on the field all the time, that she never gets too high or worked up. And as a player that's being pressured as much as she is, that's something that's really hard for some players to manage. But Megan Tyrell does it with such poise and still manages to find a way to be effective. On the Northwestern side, haven't had a shot in almost three minutes. Wildcats offense missing a couple of main pieces from a year ago. Lauren Gilbert, Jill Girardi gone. And right now, Kelly Amonti Hiller hasn't found that combination yet. Nezzy Skane's got a goal. She's starting to ramp up, but the rest of her cast, besides early flashes from Aaron Quickendall, haven't done a whole lot. And that's the second time the ball has sort of just popped out of Skane's stick. Unfortunate error for Northwestern and because they're coming up with these connections, the, the possessions off the draw, and then they're just turning it over and not getting settled in their offense. There's been a s shift in possession for, uh, on more towards the Syracuse side, so Northwestern really needs a possession here. Seven Wildcat turnovers. And two minutes to go. Wildcats maybe get one more possession before the half. Yeah, and Syracuse will likely take a good, good possession here, look for their best shot. Obviously, time is winding down in the half. You want to see if you can capitalize a couple more times. Orange with four different goal scorers today. Tyrell, no goals, but she's already got three assists. Here comes Baxter. Space for Tessa Query. She's got one, and Syracuse has seven. Query didn't have a goal last year. It's her first in orange. A really smart play by Maddie Baxter. She had a top dodge down to the right side, was patient, got the ball to Emma Ward at X, and Emma Ward immediately knew where she was going with the ball. Once she caught it, swings it to the back side, and that's just really hard to defend when you rotate the defense and you beat them with the ball. Tessa Query caught and finished and just made it, kept it simple, hit the ball off the turf and found the back of the net. Smart finish from the grad student. Spent four seasons at Harvard. 48 career goals for the Crimson, but none last year for Kayla Trainer and crew as she played more of a defensive midfield role. It's nice to have the luxury of players like Tessa where you know that they have the ability to score, so you need more offensive midfielders, offensive production, and she has that history and experience that she can provide that. Northwestern's done a great job on the draw. Chevery pokes it away. Almost a hockey style pass from her background in Canada. Syracuse possession, the clock stops. 70 seconds to go before halftime. Northwestern was arguing that Syracuse had whacked that out of, ball, uh, out of bounds, but the ball is staying with Syracuse. A ball out of bounds, one of the things you can challenge this year by video review, a new rule the NCAA has implemented. Each team gets two video challenges. And I think that's a necessary step in the game. You see in these high intensity games that it just sometimes seems like it can come down to one or two important plays. And to be able to make sure that you're getting the finite calls correct, 
you want to make sure that you're doing it. And it just allows the officials to have a little bit something to rely on. You see the game be called more correctly, and that's the best for both worlds, both teams. 30 seconds to go. Barney picking up the pace. Off to Ward. First game back has started well for 44. Feeds in front. Baxter finds base and scores. Ward threw it high. Baxter finished low. And Syracuse has doubled up Northwestern in the first half. A hard dodge from Emma Ward. A lot of space, a lot of the defenders were watching her, and then Maddie Baxter just popped off the crease with her strong hand, and she found the back of the net. She's had a couple of shots. She was nearly there, nearly scoring her first goal of the year, and then finally this one went in. Way to have your head up if you're Emma Ward. She was dodging hard. It's very hard to do find the open player on the run when you're going that at speed. So that's a high-level play, finding Baxter. And very tough if you're anyone on the Northwestern defensive side to contend with 5-10. Ward just put it up there almost like an alley-oop. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice touch pass that uh, we used to call it when I was playing. It's just putting it into air, letting your, let your, letting your teammate run onto it. You don't have to fire it right at their stick, so you can kind of adjust and just make sure it's an easy pass. 15 seconds before the break. Second quarter's been all Syracuse. Another Northwestern draw win. We'll see if they can get a nice possession here. They have not really touched the ball very much and had a set possession. Taylor going all the way. Whistle before the shot. The time will stop. They might put a bit more on the clock as well. And that's what the Northwestern coaches seem to be asking for. Nice possession. There was. I should have looked at the clock. No Taylor. wonder Taylor was going to the cooker. She made something happen with 10 <laughs> seconds to go off the draw. At least she knew it. If there's someone that's been a standout in this first half, it's been Madison Taylor. If she scores here, she'll have a hat trick. Point eight, she winds, fires, hits the pipe. This might be the story of the half for Northwestern. That's three off the post for the Wildcats. But this second quarter has been all Syracuse. Six to two, the orange advantage after two quarters of play. Emma Ward back with a vengeance. Emma Tyrell's on the score sheet. Madison Taylor making her name known around the lacrosse world. But right now, it's the orange squarely in front through 30 minutes. to four over fourth ranked Northwestern. Hello everyone and welcome on to the Qs.com halftime show with Jack Gordon. I'm Luke Schwartz and this one is not the same game as a season ago. Syracuse lost in the regular season 16 to 15 in overtime and then in the NCAA quarterfinal 15 to 4. They're looking like a whole new team Jack. Luke that was such a disappointing loss for Syracuse last season and they've completely flipped the script. This is a totally different looking orange team up 8 to 4. They look re-energized rejuvenated and the offense is telling the whole story. I mean eight goals off seven assists. Great ball movement so far. They're finding all the open players and taking advantage of all their opportunities. Eight goals, seven assists, but leading the charge for Orange is Megan Carney. She has been ridiculous so far in this one with two goals. Yeah, Luke, we talk about the Meg show. It's because Megan Tyrell is freeing up a lot of space for Megan Carney. She can shoot from anywhere, plays on the crease like that, or even a turnaround shot where Megan Tyrell's getting double teamed and Carney's wide open right in the middle. And that was her first multi-goal game of this season. She had eight a year ago. But Northwestern is still trying to hang in this one. We've seen some good from their defense and their offense, and it's been their senior highlighting at all. Number two, Erin Koikendall. Yeah, she's been very similar to Megan Carney for this team. She's a complimentary player for Izzy's game, so see a lot of attention on that Northwestern great. So you find Erin Koikendall open a lot. She can shoot left or right. She's been a huge impact for Northwestern so far. They need that complimentary player to be a real playmaker and find herself open even without any help. She can do it all. 
She's doing a great job, but number 27, Izzy Skane, she scores her first goal of the season, first in nearly two years. How much will they need her in that second half? They're going to need her a lot more. She didn't make much of an impact in this first half, and the bottom line, Luke, she's their best player. You need your best player to play well, whether it's scoring goals or finding other players. I really think she needs to be a lot more aggressive shooting. 98 goals two years ago. We'll see if number 27 can turn it up in the second half. When we come back, we're talking about the Super Bowl going from the turf in Syracuse to the gridiron down in Arizona. done a great job caging the Wildcats in this first half as the number five ranked team is up eight to four over number four Northwestern. Hello everyone and welcome back on to the Qs.com halftime show with Jack Gordon. I'm Luke Schwartz. Now lacrosse isn't the only thing going on over this weekend. We've got Super Bowl 57 tomorrow and even though Jack finished last in his fantasy football league, Jack, what's your take on the Super Bowl tomorrow? Listen, I don't want to talk about fantasy football. <laughs> it wasn't a good year for me, that's for sure. But tomorrow, I like the Chiefs. Chiefs over the birds, that's what I'm going with. I like the experience of Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. They got great flair to them. Always a fun team to watch. I'm going with Kansas City all the way. Kansas City, Philadelphia Eagles, it should be a good one. And our very own Syracuse's Gabe Carr Johnson is down in Arizona to talk a little bit about something family for both the Chiefs and the Eagles. Gabe Carr Johnson down there, but you know that some things happen like that and Gabe he got to fly down on Wednesday to go see it what I'm most jealous of is the fact that he's going from about 30 degree weather to about 67 degree weather in Arizona Luke I've, I've been living with this weather for 21 years now <laughs> I, I completely understand how happy Gabe probably was to go down south a little bit of a tan he's gonna come back and we're all gonna look a little bit extra pale uh, as the weekend goes on but taking a look here at the halftime stats for Syracuse Jack what's the one thing Thing that really stands out to you Luke I like how well Syracuse has has controlled the ball today they're taking a lot better care of it than last season in that blowout five turnovers is what stands out to me last year they had 17 in this game in the NCAA quarterfinals that's allowed them to have so many more offensive possessions and take advantage of those with all kinds of goal scores today also the draw controls it's keeping them in this game they might need to improve on it in the second half. That's mainly been Caitlin Mashuski. I think she might need to step up a little bit to make sure they keep their foot on the gas against this Northwestern team. We also talked about this in the pregame show. No Jill Girardi, no Lauren Gilbert. How much of an impact are you seeing with that in this game? Well, Luke, Northwestern has a lot of inexperienced players out there. Now they're relying a lot on Izzy Skane and Aaron Koykendall to take the shots. They need some more players, the younger players, to step up and be more aggressive. Only 15 shots so far, something they need to improve on. Like I said a little bit earlier, although the goalie play for Syracuse has been good with Delaney Schweitzer, I think Northwestern just needs to keep their foot on the gas and take a lot of shots. Doesn't have to be the best shot, just take the first one that's open. Well, let's stay on the topic of goalkeepers because right now both teams are actually doing a fantastic job. We thought it might be Kimber Hauer as the netminder for Syracuse, but it's Delaney Schweitzer. And then Molly Laliberti. She comes from Division III school, Tufts College, and she's already got seven saves in this one. Yeah, what a story for her. Coming from D3, playing for the Jumbos <laughs> over at Tufts in Massachusetts. But now this is the highest level of lacrosse you can possibly play. You're playing against the best players, the best shooters in the country in Megan Carney, Megan Tyrell. The list goes on, and she's held her own a little bit, I'm sure. Playing in the dome, it's not easy for any goalie. Sometimes you can look like a deer in the headlights in your first game out there because as a goalie, you're seeing those silver bleachers. It's not always easy to see the ball that well.
Molly LaLiberty, she had 405 career saves at Tufts College. And Delaney Schweitzer really doing a great job of taking over as the netminder and giving a presence of calm for the Syracuse defense. Yeah, Delaney Schweitzer and Kimber Hauer have been battling for this job for two years now, and it looks like Delaney Schweitzer won this competition, and she's really proven herself to be the better goalie today. I mean, only four goals allowed against one of the best teams in the country. That speaks for itself. And now going back to the offensive side, we touched on Izzy Skane. She's got one goal in this one. She missed last year due to a season-ending injury. How does she get back into this one and really start to make an impact? Well, I think she needs to be more aggressive because Syracuse is without Sarah Cooper, their best defender last season. They're figuring out their own defense. Izzy Skane just needs to shoot more. And also the defensive side, too. We saw a very physical first half. Katie Goodell got whacked over the head twice, and she took it like it was nothing. How does Syracuse get back to that physicality and really take it in that second half? Yeah, they did a great job of not reacting to those physical plays. They didn't do anything that was off script there because this is a rivalry. These teams don't like each other. It's going to be physical and aggressive, and Syracuse took those punches well, and it led to a goal on a player-up opportunity. Physical and aggressive, just like the Super Bowl tomorrow, and now we'll send it to Gabe Carr Johnson. Hey guys, I'm right outside of State Farm Stadium, home of Super Bowl 57, played between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles. Now the big story here today isn't going to be Jalen Hurts versus Patrick Mahomes. It's not going to be A.J. Brown versus Miko Hartman, but it's going to be Jason Kelsey versus Travis Kelsey, and how Mama Kelsey is going to be able to handle this one. I have an older brother. I've played against him. I don't know how my mom did it, and I don't know how Mama Kelsey is going to do it tomorrow. But I guess we'll find out. Jack and Luke, back to you guys. Picking it up from the Dome, Ian Unsworth and Alyssa Murray Cometti with you as Syracuse leads Northwestern 8-4. to four. 15 minutes on the clock. We're about to get the third quarter going. A lot of players to Wharton Award watch listers. The list just released yesterday. Four on either side. Izzy Skane, Megan Tyrell, the main names to know, but a lot of others interwoven there as well. And diver deservedly so. The watch list goes out to, they have several iterations of it throughout the year, and these are the players who have really performed early on, so they got it right. Four players for either side in this game. UNC, Boston College also has four on the list. Maryland leads all teams in Division I with five. Maryland is going to be tough to beat. They have a lot of returning players from last year, and it gained even a couple of great transfers, including Marge Donovan, the Ivy League Defender of the Year from Princeton, headed for her graduate year in College Park. They call it Defender U for a reason. Mm. Sam Smith wins the draw clean. Northwestern has controlled the draws, now 10-6 in favor of the Wildcats, but it just has not led to scoring. They've had some costly turnovers once they have gotten possession, so I'm sure that's something that Amante Hiller talked to them about during halftime. Carly Mahoney takes the check. Almost was ready to run off, but she has to restart <laughs> play. What offensive adjustments are you making at halftime if you're Kelly Amante Hiller? Really getting possessions. I think they've rushed it a little bit when they when they had longer possessions and moved the ball they were successful and you know early in, in the season and early in a game if you're hitting pipes I'm counting that as a as a good shot right if you're inches away from a goal so getting quality shots like those and you just hope that they start to fall we can go back to skiing Skane seen two sticks almost everywhere she goes. Syracuse in the zone. Feed to the middle. Hanson scores. A good start to the second half for Northwestern as L. Hanson gets on the board. So whatever they talked about at halftime is clearly something that worked. Uh, backside movement against the zone is really difficult to defend, and L. Hansen read that perfectly. She sliced right off the backside. Izzy Skame just saw her making the cut, and Tessa Query's uh, slide was just too, too slow, too late. By the time that she got there, L. Hansen had already released the ball. 
Anton had two goals against the Cuse in her freshman and sophomore years. One of three players on Northwestern's team that has played in the Dome before. And she had a great season last year. She missed a couple of games due to injury, but then late in the season came on really strong for the Wildcats. was a big part of how much they had grown from the early season to the end. Goal and two assists in the NCAA tournament last year. 18 goals, 14 assists on the year. Hanson, Alley, Burkery, and Izzy Skane are the only Wildcats that have stepped foot on Ernie Davis Legends Field before. Last visit for the Cats was in 2019. Teams have met five times since then, four times at Northwestern, and then once on a neutral field in Towson. Coach Amante Hiller was talking about how excited Aaron Koykendall is to finally be able to play close to home, and that a lot of players have never even gotten this chance. And, you know, just the way with how COVID fell, that they, where you usually swap back and forth if they didn't get that chance. Koykendall was hounded by a triple team, but somehow the Wildcats kept possession. Sammy White, former three sports star in high school, gives it off to Skane. Roll an assist for Izzy Skane today. Another pass to the middle. Another score. Sam Smith, low left. Two quick ones for the Cats. And that's the second time that just an off-ball cut has sliced into the middle of the Syracuse zone. Sam Smith just cutting into the middle and knowing that the defender's going to be on her back, she quickly turned her hips to face the cage. That way she can see where the defensive slide is coming from. And Simpkins is just too late to close the space between the shooter and herself and doesn't get enough pressure on that shot. And almost hit her stick from Delaney Schweitzer as well. The goalie had no idea where that shot was. It's really difficult to read as a goalkeeper. As the, if the shooter is turning and firing off a shot, it's very hard because you can't see their stick like you said. And it, uh, on top of that, it was just a great place shot. Schweitzer keeps rolling in cage. Five saves thus far. Won the job over Kimber Hauer. Kayla Trainer told her players last night it was Schweitzer that would start in goal just like last season. But last year, the goalies flipped off half. Schweitzer played the first half in the opener against Stanford and Hauer the second. Today, it's the USC transfer Delaney Schweitzer who will stay in the cage. Tyrell on defense now. First saw her in the second quarter. She scored on her first action of the game. And off the pass from her sister. You've got to imagine the... Look at Izzy Skane. Too much space in the middle of the Syracuse defense. And that is vintage 27. Rocket of a shot. Another turnaround score. And just like that, Northwestern's cut the Syracuse lead to one. The Syracuse defense is just too slow, sliding from low to high into the mid middle. Again, Simpkins needs to get there sooner, but also Syracuse needs to put more pressure on the ball. They're just letting the feeder stand around the, uh, the 12 and take their time to find the open cutter. When you feel rushed as a passer, it's harder to find the open player, and it's also more difficult to get an accurate pass. So Syracuse needs to put more pressure on the ball and also make that backside uh, and low, low crease slide get there sooner. Mahoney with the feed and Skane with the score, her second. And you can start to see Skane start to get back to her normal self. We saw her with a couple of errors in the uncharacteristic errors in the first half, but you know, she's been away from the field for quite some time and you can start to see that the old Izzy Skane is coming back and the lacrosse world is rejoicing. This is Skane's first game in 628 days. Her last one before tearing her ACL in a fall scrimmage against Northwest, against Notre Dame, was against Syracuse in the 2021 NCAA tournament. She had four goals, three assists, but Northwestern fell. And Skane said post game that the Cats didn't come out how they wanted to, played a little scared almost. 
And that was a really t difficult season, the 2021 season, especially for Big Ten teams. They weren't allowed to play anyone but Big Ten teams, so you didn't really get to see the sort of teams that you're used to. Here comes Tyrell, hopping a skip and a score. Tyrell left to right, easy sweep under. And Syracuse now stops this Northwestern run. You've got a goal from a former Twarton finalist on one end, and then it happens again on the other. And it's that is just the patented Tyrell move, a little lefty pull dodge. Get the defender on your back a little bit. She keeps her stick in front of her to protect her stick and just tucks it right in the bottom corner. She keeps things so simple, and it doesn't seem to be that difficult, but it is such a, a difficult play to do. Uh, she just makes it look easy. Tyrell, so many accolades coming into this season. Melissa, I know you talked to her one-on-one -on -one a couple days ago, but Kayla Trainer saying that there's nothing that rattles Megan Tyrell. Completely the opposite of her head coach. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, ad admirable. I mean, I think as a player, I wish I had a little bit more of that, that she was just, that she's just able to can be steady and consistent no matter what. I think every player, uh, and Kayla Trainer mentioned that she's like, I've never coached a player like that. She's so calm and she's so focused and stays consistent. And that's a great quality to have in your best player. Tyrell's 78 goals last year were one off her coach trainers program record of 79. Northwestern's been all over it at the draw. Four to one in this third quarter. Dante cuts through the middle, creates some space for Koykendall. Which black shirt pops up in space now. Taylor behind the cage, two first half goals for the freshman. Oh, hesitation move from Bowling. Cuts to the cage, meets three, and draws a whistle. And that's an easy call for the officials. Baxter, too much contact uh, on Bolig there. Superior Clark overextended and really just overcommitted. She just went out too hard, not, not her best footwork. You've got to close the gap without overcommitting. Bowling one for three on eight meters last year. Ready shooter. Winds and fires the bouncer off the leg of Schweitzer. Delaney Schweitzer has been stout against Northwestern's free position chances. Five of them today, but Schweitzer stood up. Shot clock resets. Northwestern keeps it moving. And another shooting space, this time Taylor. Another easy call for the officials, and that's what when you play against a zone, when you swing the ball like that from a far point on the field to, to another point, the slides are so long that that low to high slide from defense is almost always going to be called a shooting space foul. Northwestern's team winning goal in the first matchup was a shooting space. Taylor can't get it past Schweitzer. And that was something that having Lauren Gilbert on the field was such a huge advantage because she just got off the line so fast. She wasn't a player that would just step in and crank it. She would get off the line super quick, faster than any of the opponents, and usually had a pretty open shot. Swites are in dangerous territory and loses it. Madison Taylor's been all over the field today. Plays on offense and then a pickpocket on defense. And you can tell she is a fearless freshman. A great back check under control on Schweitzer. And then to come up with the ground ball for Northwestern. That's just the effort that Coach Kelly Amanti loved to see. It's a yellow card on Simpkins. And now Northwestern will have a player up opportunity. Two minutes for the Cats. Seven on six. Around the wheel. Smith to Hanson. Skane just missed the pass. Not a whole lot of pressure, but took her eyes off it to look at the defense. Sometimes when you're waiting, you think you're getting ready to shoot. You just think one step ahead and forget the 
most important part. Boy can go around the bend. Stain winds up again. Very right there. Another charge. Katie Goodell, two today. Sacrificing the body for the good of the squad. She has such an understanding of getting her hips in front and not extending her arms on a cross check. She gets her body in front and just absorbs the contact. And when, when the attacker drops their shoulder, it's a clear charge. Got a timeout from Kayla Trainer. Syracuse up two, but down a player. We've talked a lot about the history between these two teams. Northwestern won both matchups last year, including this one. On February 23rd, it went down to the wire. It was a thriller. Emily Harris Chuck had one of her best games all season long, nine points, but Lauren Gilbert was the star. She scored the game winning, game tying goal and game winning. We were talking about her free position. Look how fast she gets off the line there. She was uh, lethal off the free position. The game winner in the first possession of overtime for Lauren Gilbert was 20 of 35 on free positions last year. In the postseason, it was all Northwestern from the jump. Outscored SU 6-2 to two in the first quarter. Lauren Gilbert again, the headliner every time. She was such a great scorer for Northwestern, and, and Madison Doucette had a great game herself, really came on strong at the end of the season, had 11 saves. Northwestern just had all the answers in that game. A tough road trip for Syracuse playing at Martin Stadium after having to play the opening matches of the NCAA tournament away from the Dome. It was graduation weekend, so the site was relocated to Princeton. So those home games weren't so homey for SU. It's tough as a team when you earn a... a home game in the playoffs to not be able to play in your uh, normal stadium and and so uh, disappointing for Syracuse the orange up two went to the halftime break up 8-4 and then Northwestern scored the first three of the third quarter Skane unmarked someone forgot about Izzy Skane a hat trick in her first game back. Northwestern now down one. That's not a good person to forget about. She recognizes it. Superior Clark had her back to the ball. Clearly a miscommunication. And then tripped as she tried to recover. And that's just the amount of power that Skane gets behind her shot. When you're coming in unmarked, Schweitzer's just got to try and guess right. And that time Skane had the answer. Schweitzer runs out and taps the stick of Superior Clark, who in her first game as a freshman has had an up and down time. Which is to be expected, right? This is the first game. The way that you're going to finish the season is going to look entirely different than the way you started. We talked about the opening game for Northwestern against Boston College with Coach Amante Hiller, and she said, we couldn't have played worse, but it was great, which is funny to hear a coach say that, but it's true. You learn so much from these early challenges. Syracuse has played two freshman defenders in Clark and Coco Vandiver for a majority of this contest. It's critical experience for players that you know will be impact players for you. It's just they have to learn. Smith wins another draw control. 13 to 7, the advantage for the Wildcats. Samantha Smith's found a hot hand in the second half. And sometimes it's just all about the matchups. Mischewski just doesn't seem to be matching up well against Smith today, but it just, it can change from game to game. This game burst past Smith. This is over the top. Northwestern there on the backup. And Syracuse has to get to her strong side better. She can't keep coming down the middle like that because she will score plenty. Chevry bumps Koykendall off her base. Very physical defender, Bianca Chevry, moved from the midfield to defense last year. Then Kayla Trainer put her on Charlotte North. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, that's not the easiest person to be guarding. Slides coming all over the place from Syracuse. That's just it. That was a clear foul by Nat Smith. She's got to be a little bit more under control. A very obvious extension of her hands. Easy cross-check call. 
looked like a little bit of a frustration foul, not something you want to give up. Luckily for SU, it's a 12 meter restart, not an eight meter, rather close. Stain left open again, we've got a shooting space violation. Syracuse might be lucky on that end. Lucky, and especially lucky that it's the hanging hash. But again, another miscommunication on the shift of the defense on the Syracuse side. So they just have to tighten up their communication. Tough angle for Stain. Hat trick already. Here she comes to the crease, and Sleitzer's there. But a push on the shot. Indication is Skane's getting another chance. And she'll have a better angle now because she fought her way to the middle. That's a, oop, could have been two fouls, but it looked like Simpkins came up a little high on her, her head, and now it'll be a center hash free position. See if Schweitzer can have the answer for Skane once again. No free position goals for the Cats. 0 of 7. Schweitzer's stopped Skane three times. Straight away chance. Make it four. Oh. Delaney Schweitzer so quick. If you're Syracuse, you're saying slow it down. Have some composure. It seems that Syracuse has come out of the half a little bit uh, unruly. You know, you're making these stops. You want to be able to capitalize. And now a yellow card served to, to uh, Syracuse for a cross check there. So Tyrell picking it up. Officials trying to get the game back under control. Obviously, we talked about it being overly physical historically between these teams. So just want to keep things under control, especially early on in the year. Tyrell caught Sam White square in the back. Two minute moment up. Schweitzer out of the cage for the Cubes. Smith to Skane. Taylor with space. A shooting space. She's one away from a hat trick. Got two goals in the first half. And you know, as a coach, good, thing hap good things happen when you go at speed, and that's something that Taylor's done. Taylor to the crease, and she got it. Madison Taylor breaks Northwestern's free position drought, and we're tied at nine. Taylor just gets a good start off the line, beats the defenders to the crease, and just tucks it on the back pipe. Northwestern is fired up. Their game's tied up. Came out of the half super strong. Great halftime adjustments, and it's a new ball game. Six to two, Syracuse outscored Northwestern in the second quarter, and now 5-1 in favor of the Wildcats in the third. And that's what makes lacrosse so fun. It's a game of runs that anything can change. Syracuse needs some change at the center right now. Mashevsky, seven wins. Sam Smith and Sierra DeMuno combined. 13. Smith again, clean. If you're Kate Mashevsky, when you head over to the sidelines, what are you changing? It, it, you just have to, sometimes it just depends. Usually the draw taker can really tell if they didn't get the, a jump on the, the whistle, if they didn't have the ball in their favor in the stick. So there's little things that they might already know that didn't go well on that draw. But Coach Kayla Trainer is one of the a great, great draw takers at Syracuse. She had her senior year, just had a boatload of draw controls herself. So she knows how to make the adjustments as well. Coach Trainer making those adjustments right now. Northwestern called timeout. Goal puts the Cats in front. Izzy Skane has been a big time piece in the second half. Now five total points for the grad student. And what a way, way to come back. You've been a sideline for so long and she's doing it in a bunch of different ways. There's her goal from the right side elbow. She's catching it off a cut. 
and just was left alone. Syracuse miscommunication on the zone, and that's not the right person to forget about. And Izzy Skein is just poised and ready to make an impact in the 23 season. She's been waiting for this moment for many, many months, and great to see her back out there. The accolades of plenty. She's number two on your personal tour to watch list, Melissa, after Meg Tyrell. And because dueling back-to-back -back seasons, Skeen has over 100 points in 2021. Tyrell over 100 in 2022. For Izzy Skeen, this is a chance to get back after it. A first serious injury last year. She said before her ACL tear in a fall scrimmage against Notre Dame, she never had something she couldn't just slap a Band-Aid on and go out and play. Alyssa, what's it like coming back from a serious injury? How do you get your mind right? Well, it's exciting. It, it, it's, it's You finally put all this work in and get to have the moment where you get to come back. And it's a battle between being too eager and pushing the, uh, the issue and not letting the game come to you. But I don't think Skane has done that at all. I think she's really taken her opportunities when they've come and taken advantage. And she's been extremely smart. I think part of that allows uh, is due to her being a veteran and really understanding the pace of the Division One game. So she's smart. She's a great player. And she knows exactly when to take advantage and just to not rush things and wait for her moments. And she really has. Northwestern and Skane bullies her way to the cage, but had it knocked away. Chevery and Vandenberg combined for the turnover, and now Izzy Skane is slow to get up. She was dodging a little bit out of control there. I'm not sure if she fell on her shoulder weird. Or... Yeah, it looked like she just tripped. Uh, incidental contact. Yeah, she's holding her elbow. Maybe got a little piece of a stick on there, which doesn't feel good on your funny bone. She went almost shoulder and a waist of Katie Goodell. Let's see what Syracuse can do offensively. Been a rather quiet third quarter for Kayla Trainer's crew. Leading scorers right now for the Orange are Carney and Adamson with two apiece. Both Tyrells, Tessa Query have also contributed as well as Emma Ward. Here comes Emma Tyrell, right to left. Dodge gets some space. Smith in there with the check. It looks like we're having an eight meter. And that's Northwestern. Anytime a defender is coming up high and just trying to make a swiping check at a dodging attacker, most defensive coaches are just going to say, just play body, just play body. And usually then it doesn't result in an eight meter. Tyrell excellent from the arc last year, 10 of 12. Her first of 23. Here she comes and scores. Bounced it low left. Emma Tyrell second. And Syracuse up 10-9. And Tyrell, she plays big in big games. And a great start off the line. Great shot off stick side on a lefty goalie. That's really tough to save. La Liberty tried to get her foot out there, get a piece of it, but it was just a step behind. Put Syracuse back up 10-9. And Emma Tyrell. Just like Skane, it's big days for a lot of players coming back from injury. You can see, feel a sigh of relief every time these players start to chip away and feel like a little bit more like their normal selves. One of two players on the preseason All-ACC team from Syracuse, the other her sister. Tyrell was in inside the cross midseason second team All-American. Hers came out just before her season-ending injury. She was off to a really, really great season. A heartbreaking end, of course, but that's sometimes the way that sports go. In 12 games last year, Emma Tyrell had 30 goals, 20 assists, and 64 draw controls. Led all non-centers in that category. Another draw control for Northwestern there. And some, something to look out for is the way that the Northwestern Wildcats are playing on the circle. Jenny Markey crashed right in, and Northwestern was more ready for the ball to be popped over. So a little bit more of a battle. If I'm Syracuse, I'm, I'm telling them, you've got to box out on the wings. Space for Hanson. Now Amante. Syracuse.
Syracuse zone, packing it in, watching that center. Shot clock over halfway down. Boykendall thought about the shot, had that angle for a second. Takes the give. Markey out there, stick held high. Better defensive possession from Syracuse. Taylor loses it. Now 20 to shoot. What can Hanson create? Nothing thus far. Boykendall keeps possession. Whistle, but only 10 seconds to go. Cats need something quick. To the middle. Skein gets a stop. No shot clock reset. Two, one, and a goal. Dylan Amati in the nick of time. Number 10 ties us at 10. And that's great awareness of the short clock by Northwestern. L. Hansen grabs it from the end line and just goes immediately. Dylan Amante makes a quick cut and really, really great awareness by Northwestern to get that shot off very quickly. Nothing more deflating for a defense than getting a stop and then giving up a goal at the end of a shot clock at, like that. Amante doubled her goal total last season. Nine scores in 2021 and 18 in 2022. She's one of those players that was a role player, but very reliable. And so it's players like that that you expect that it, season by season, they can continue to build upon the last year's results. Someone who will be looked to to step up after Gilbert and Girardi's offensive production have left. Northwestern now eight to one in the third quarter on the draw. And they're doing a great job just directing that ball into space. Amati again. This time Schweitzer stops her cold. Chevry pushed in the back and Syracuse can now move forward. Not a whole lot of momentum for Syracuse in this third quarter. The score the exact opposite of the second. 2-2 two two after 1, 8-4 after 2. And now knotted up at 10 apiece as the Wildcats have outscored the Orange 6-2 in the third quarter. Every possession when the quarters and the runs are feeling like it's not going your way is critical. So in, in this case for Syracuse, expect to see them take a nice possession and work for a good shot rather than the first one. See if Megan Tyrell can find some space. Scored her first in the third. Pass to the middle. Emma with a chance. And La Liberty right there to meet her. Ball's going the other way as Kingfield wins the chase. And that was a great run out by Kingsfield. That's a huge momentum play for a defense when you can get a stop and then go run out the ball. Northwestern can run it down at 20 if it wants to. Domino still on the field after the draw. Boykendall with three first half points, going to assists. Skeen's got five total points, and she's hounded by a triple team. Little space for White. Looked like Goodell picked her pocket clean. And Syracuse has to slow things down. Yellow card on Dylan Amante. I think it's actually on Smith. It seems like she's running to the sideline. She was the shooter. She had her back to the cage, had no awareness of where the dis defender was sliding. Goodell came to uh, to slide to right to her back, and she had a backhanded shot, and her follow-through hit into Goodell, and that is a uh, dangerous propelling it's a yellow card, uh, dangerous follow through, da uh, yellow card issued to the shooter. So White's the one that picks up the yellow. Two minute woman up for Syracuse. And the minutes ago in the third. And the orange go in front before the break. After a 
Third quarter, that's been all Wildcats. Kelly and Monty Hiller's squad came out with three straight goals out of the break, attacking the middle of Syracuse's zone defense and causing the Orange problems. And Izzy's game looks like her old self. 30 seconds to go. Schweitzer directs the offense. Players behind Cage rotate in a triangle. Smith, the fake layoff, feeds Tyrell. Pass to the middle for Ward! Tic-tac-toe, Syracuse scores! And that's the same play. We saw Emma Tyrell score her first goal. A player up, they ran that same play. They weaved up top, hit it low to Megan Tyrell and sent a backside cut. This time it's Emma Ward. A lot of movement creates chaos, especially when you're a player down. And Syracuse is doing a great job. They clearly understand that play and understand the timing very well. That's very difficult to defend because if you're slow on that cut, they can send another and, then, and hit whatever cut from the backside. And they ran it with 12 seconds to go, so they could have hit another option. But great finish by Emma Ward. Put Syracuse back up by one. This is a great game. Triumphant return for Ward. Back, back to the, the bike. bike. <laughs> Got to stay warm. Started off her athletic career playing running back. Played basketball, played soccer, just for fun. <laughs> and then found the game of lacrosse. Five points after six against Northwestern in the 2021 NCAA Tournament. Eight seconds to go. Got to go quick if you're Syracuse. Matt Get it Smith upfield. is certainly quick. Emerson Bowling stops play for a second, and that ends the third. And that was a far, smart uh, foul by a Northwestern just to slow the play down. Syracuse got hit in the mouth in this third quarter. Northwestern outscores the Orange six to three, but a last second goal from Emma Ward puts the Orange in front. 11-10 the score with 15 minutes to go. Stick with us. Syracuse up by one. The fifth ranked Orange lead the fourth ranked Wildcats of Northwestern. 11 to 10, it's been back and forth. Two to two after one, and both of these squads getting their legs under them. Syracuse in the second quarter, Northwestern in the third. And that's to be expected early on. Game of runs, it's just the way that lacrosse goes. It's how you finish the game, obviously. And it's just been fun to watch. I, I love to see the in-game adjustments that both teams have made and to see how those swings have paid off for each of them. And it's just two really tactical coaches coaching against each other. It's it's fun to watch. Big returns for Izzy Skane, five points for the grad student. Emma Ward coming back from her season ending injury has five points as well. And Emma Tyrell has chipped in two goals after tearing her ACL mid-season last year. It's great to see players make comebacks like that. You never know how it's going to pan out, how difficult their return will be. And so just watching it is really special that they can come back and make an impact. So here's a question. Kayla Trainer said that she was going to manage her players' time, try to keep them healthy for the long run. But now that we have played three quarters, this is an intense game, probably going down to the wire. Do you let your horses run in the fourth? I think it just depends. I think if they've been balancing it like they are in monitoring. Horses running right now. Here comes Carney. La Liberty with a save. I think that didn't even get to La Liberty. I think there may have been a deflection. But either way, great on Northwestern. But I think if you've been managing that, and they say they, they check the live stats as it's happening, you're, they're expecting this to be quite a, a, a tough game. So hopefully they can just play as they planned. Hughes have live GPS units their players wear so they can track all the data, how much a player's sprinting, how much they're accelerating, how many miles they've run during the game. Megan Barney scored Syracuse's first goal of the season. Two in the first half for number 22, but hasn't found Twine in the second. Working against Berkery, two grad students. A lot of notches on both of their belts. 
Baxter fakes the handoff. Goes right to left. Baxter with space, and she's fine twine. Syracuse scores to end the third and scores first to start the fourth. The Orange back up two. And Maddie Baxter looked like she was wanting to go to goal that entire drive. She re-dodged back to the middle when she got stopped going to out wide to her right hand. A nice split dodge back to the middle. She put it back in her right hand for the shot. But just a relentless dodge. She, she has the green light. Coach Kayla Trainer talked about all that she did over the summer. She developed playing for Team Canada was huge for her confidence. And that was a confident dodge. Nine goals and six assists for Baxter, who won gold with Team Canada in sixes and then silver in the lacrosse world championships lost to her head coach in the finals kayla trainer told us that playing for team usa reminded her what it's like to be a player again how you hang on every word a coach says and you learn that experience keep relearning it so that you can better help your players going forward she's such a student of the game in every aspect and takes every experience and puts it towards how she can better coach her squad, which is really admirable. Serafina DeMuno wins the draw. Northwestern back to attack. No Haley Radigan for the Wildcats. Mercer transfer who scored 93 goals last year, not suited up today. Western's found scoring in other areas. Madison Taylor and Izzy Skeen both with hat tricks. Aaron Koykendall and Mel Hansen have also added three points apiece. Goal and two assists for both. Taylor's a lefty, loves that left hand. Syracuse brought three to the ball and drew a whistle. And Baxter just bit on those fakes a little too much by Taylor. She was working her back and forth. She wanted to get back to the middle, and then Baxter caught a little too underneath uh, of Taylor as she's dodging, and then ended up kind of hooking her and holding her from running uh, into the middle. So free position. Here comes Taylor. Money. Four goals in her first collegiate game. Madison Taylor is comfortable in that black and purple. What a debut. Coming back to your home state of New York, although it's a little bit north of where she's from, but great finish to the pipe. She's playing confident, and throughout the game, that hasn't wavered. She's been one of the go-to players, and as a first-year player, that's quite impressive. Career high four in her first ever game. She chose Northwestern over Michigan, Florida, and Syracuse. Draw control advantage now 17 to 9 for Northwestern. Sam Smith's been money in the second half. 34 draw controls last year. And seven today. <laughs> this time, Mashevsky gets the better of her. And lost it. And when you're that close to the restraining line, I'm telling Mashevsky, just keep running. Just, you have the ball. Syracuse picks it right back. Carney deflects the pass and forces the turnover. Great effort by the Syracuse ride to regain possession. Northwestern was eight, of eight on clears. Not necessarily a clear clear, but still an example where you have to move it from back to front. How about Delaney Schweitzer as well, running over to her defenders, giving them fist bumps. Katie Goodell, you could tell. Little short of breath after that run up the field. <laughs> she seems to be everywhere on the defensive end at all times. Here comes Emma Tyrell. See more and more time in this contest. 
Started playing in the second quarter. Now finds the space up to Carney, who has a hat trick. After just one goal last year in the NCAA tournament, none against Northwestern. Throw the hats for Megan Carney. She's got three. Love to see a little two-man game. Emma Tyrell and Meg Carney are working that right side of the eight meter. Tyrell forces a slide. That's the green light for Carney to start hedging in towards the cage and Tyrell just gets rid of it. As soon as she sees that slide come, she knows exactly where to go with it. And Carney just finds the back of the net. Head faked left, went right. Really smart play from Carney. As a veteran, well, it's almost like the game slows down sometimes. Definitely, and those moments that you may have not even seen as options become wide open. The more experience you get and the more uh, game time that you get, and it really does, it slows down and you can kind of just evaluate the field and survey what's happening uh, with a little bit more ease. Carney has been good for a long time. We should put that out there. For sure. Four goals against Northwestern in 2019 NCAA tournament competition. Also played for the USA U19 team in 2019, coached by Kelly Monte Hiller. The lacrosse world is very small. There's a lot of crossover. Izzy Skane was also on that squad. So Syracuse up two. Three and a half minutes into the fourth. Sam Smith had full of steam. And now slows it down. Boykendall and Skane have worked in tandem for a majority of this contest on the left side. Boykendall's offensive role changed a little bit last year. Without Skane in there, she'd play behind the cage and then roll up to the left. Monty, a little crease in the middle, and takes a push to the back. Simpkins with the foul. And that's somewhere something that you just don't want to extend there. Just let the, defend, uh, the offensive player just absorb the contact into you and it's not as much of a threat. If they feed it into her and your body position is there, she doesn't have many options. Monty's got a goal today. Seven to 12 last year, and she pipes it in. Ping and ring for Dylan Amonti. These teams keep trading scores. The last time Dylan Amonti had that hash, she took a step and shot it. This time, she got off the line, took a great shot. It doesn't get much closer to the pipe than that. But just you allow for a little bit more time and you don't have to rip it quite as hard when you get off the line and you run it in a couple of steps. It's really hard to do. Charlotte North made it, makes it look so easy, but it's just not that easy. <laughs> I'd say Charlotte North makes almost everything look easy. <laughs> she does. Monty almost closed down her angle, but opened it up on the left side running towards goal line extended. Well, as she runs toward goal, uh, goal line extended, she dragged the goalkeeper with her, allowing that to get that low angle shot back to the left pipe. So she brings the goalie with her and then tucks it back. We've been neck and neck all through the second half. Mashevsky's taken every draw for Syracuse. One five to herself. 110 for her team. The Northwestern's almost doubling up the Cuse in that category with 19 wins. And that's something on the wings that I, I'm interested to see if Syracuse adjusts. They are not matching feet, especially on the defensive end uh, with the wing player for Northwestern. I like to match feet, though. That way, if it goes right to him, you're at least it's a 50 50. When you talk about match feet, you just mean staying step for step. Yeah, and lining up alongside them. Hanson flicks it back out to Koykendall. Crossfield find and Skane. A missile. A step down from 10 yards out, and Izzy Skane ties us at 13, her fourth. She can score from anywhere. You think that you're covering her in a good spot. She's just outside the eight meter and just ping right off that top left corner. Skane is nodding her head. She knew that was good the whole way. You know she's back when you see a laser like that come off the right hand. With Skane coming back, with Syracuse getting its players back, 
so much offensive artillery on both sides. We knew this was going to be a good one. It always is. Just like that early season contest last year. Probably going down to the wire. Maybe even last possession wins. It was Lauren Gilbert who nodded things up at 15. On the game's last possession indoors at Ryan Fieldhouse and then scored the game winner in overtime off the free position. So there, Maddie Baxter had matched feet with the... Feet inside. Tyrell stuck cold. No, it was good out. Defender almost had a goal. Unlucky, though. Great save by La Liberty. Great run from Goodale. Yep. Coming all the way up from the backside. And I like to see a defender have a shot like that. Have the confidence to take a shot like that in a big game. He almost had it. Goodale had two assists last year, but no goals. That's a skein. That quick fake, so effective. She'll wrap around the rainbow and flick it. Hansen with space, ran into three defenders. It's a really nice back check there. Well-timed, they uh, kind of worked out well because I thought the Syracuse slide was a little slow coming off that cut. Hansen pressuring Chevery. Looks like we have a timeout. Needed timeout at that for Kayla Trainer and crew. Sort things out. 17 apiece, under 10 minutes to go from the Dome. A season opener living up to expectations. Both teams trading blows down the stretch of the fourth quarter in the Dome. Ian Unsworth, Alyssa Murray, committee with you high above Ernie Davis Legends Field. Neither team, Alyssa, has scored more than three straight in the second half. It's punch for punch. It's been a tight one, and that's kind of what you expect. They both have a lot uh, of lethal weapons, and especially they're just a competitive, uh, competitive little rivalry that we've had going for the last several years. Trainer called timeout before the break. Syracuse has to clear. 17 of 20 are the orange today. And that's something you need to improve down the stretch. Every possession is so critical, tied up with just under nine minutes to play. Goodell gets it over in the nick of time. And the Orange fire up the offense. Quick passing is played off for the Orange in the second half. Megan Tyrell, Emma Ward with five points apiece. Tyrell, four dimes. Seen the face guard almost all day. Mainly from Carly Mahoney, 29, who's checking Tyrell right now. Towards and favorite gets ahead of Steen, dumps it down to Carney. Megan Carney's been money right in front of the cage. And it starts because Megan Tyrell is such a threat. They have to slide, they have to honor her. But I don't love that Northwestern's sending a front slide. She can see it all the way in. So she sees that Northwestern defender goes towards her, leaving the net first cutter wide open. And the first cutter is Megan Tyrell. If I'm Northwestern, I, Mahoney should work to get back in front of her and send a slide from her backside so she, it's not as obvious. Carney with four. Tyrell now five assists. And when I spoke with Megan Tyrell about how do you handle uh, going into games when teams are just, a lot of their game plan is to stop you and she just was so calm about it. She's like, you know, my teammates will make up for it and you know, I'll find a way to contribute and five assists it is. And now four goals for Carney. Preseason honorable mention All-American from inside lacrosse. Collision right after the draw. And it looks like Goodale slid in late. So I've said how great Goodale is at understanding the time and space that she needs to give. She did not give enough, quite enough time there. Taylor had not even caught the ball, and she was right underneath her. If she was a step away where she would have turned into her, then it probably would have been a charge. Skane draws shooting space. 
He's already scored one from distance. Have to respect that big time wind up. And so she continued to shoot that because of continuation. If she scored and they deemed that she was already in the shooting motion, the goal would count. Spain on the edge of the left side. Schweitzer stick save. That is a huge save. That had some heat. Schweitzer with 10 stops today. Pass to the middle deflected. Nat Smith has it. She's great in transition. Shovels it ahead to Jenny Markey. Look at the speed from Sam Smith coming to recover. Markey still ahead. A wayward pass over Adamson. Almost threw it blind. Oop. Well, too much contact from Tyrell there. Happy hip check. <laughs> really unfortunate turnover. Once you get a stop, that's not something you want to give back. But I think, really, Markey felt the pressure from Smith working so hard to get back that she felt like she needed to get rid of it. So that's young players out there. Never give up on the play. Two-time Big Ten Freshman of the Week last year has made an impact all over the field today. A goal and eight draw controls. Boykinel's yeah. been quiet in the second half. Bob over the top. Skane working for space to Smith. Schweitzer again. Big body save this time. Delaney Schweitzer's been confident today. We heard she was playing well in the preseason coming into this thing, and she squarely won the job, at least for now, from Kimber Howard. And last season, Coach Trainer talked about how hard the goalkeepers are working. They struggled to stop the ball at times, but a lot of effort compounded usually works out pretty darn well, and clearly it's paying off. A lot of hard work is working out well for Delaney Schweitzer. Save percentage of almost 50. You score around the horn. Another errant pass. And that's an unforced turnover that you don't want to be giving up. So Syracuse, two tri trips down the field have been turnovers that could have been avoided. A little mishandle from DeMuno. Western cool and calm. Bowling races past the restraining line. And a timeout. As the second swain, Kelly Amati Hiller wants to game plan with her squad. Both teams down to one timeout. Back and forth we go in the second half. There's Megan Carney on your screen. She's been fantastic. Four goals today, six shots. Carney has such a great understanding of how to time cuts off ball. You see her getting a, a pass from Olivia Adamson there. This time it was from Tyrell. She just knows how to connect with teammates. She times when to get a start her cut. Another goal off a pass, a two-man game we talked about. And then the last one, right, again, off of a uh, cut from uh, while well, Tyrell drew a double team. She really works so well with teammates. And she's finishing the ball at a really high rate. Really nice decision on where she's placing her shots. She's doing a really, really great job to start the, uh, the season. It also feels like we've seen her in a more fluid role this year almost. Last year spent a lot of time on goal line extended, left at the cage, or maybe even behind. But we've seen her cut from up top. We've seen her cut from the right side. A lot of different ways to exploit Northwestern's defense. I think that's across the board of the Syracuse offense. You see a lot of these players that are, go that are getting different looks. You saw Maddie Baxter popping off the crease once for a shot. Moving the players at, makes the matchups a little different where defenders who may not be used to covering a player behind in men's across, they call it an invert. Same thing in this case, you, a midfielder may not be as comfortable defending uh, around the crease. Moving your defenders around just gives a different look and opens up different options. Not enough space per se in women's across to really work a true invert, but still a lot of flexibility with your roles. And for Syracuse, with all the offensive talent they have, returning we've seen him award two goals three assists today 
Emma Tyrell's jump right back into things with three points. Moving all that around really creates those matchup problems. Having motion on offense in any, really any sport, usually works out pretty well. It, it's harder to defend when people are moving and you gotta keep an eye on them than if they're stationary. Northwestern's moved well throughout Syracuse's zone defense. Now after a chance to draw something up, the Monty Hiller's squad will look to move some more. Smith to Skane. Vandiver right there. Grad student going at the freshman. Here comes Amante, she's got three points. Lays it off to Sammy White. Spacing a little twisted here for Northwestern. You can see they're cycling on both elbows to try and work the, the defensive zone. It's really hard to defend on the elbow of a zone, so they're really trying to work that gap. Taylor gets to the middle. And a whistle stops things. A lot of space in that middle, and Madison Taylor went right to it. And as a player playing against a zone, that elbow was my favorite place to be located because I felt like that middle slide where Maddie Taylor is right now, uh, Maddie Baxter is right now, was very felt very far away as an attacker, and Maddie Taylor took advantage. Seen Northwestern pick up the free positions. Here comes Taylor, bounces it in. One, two, three, four, five goals for Madison Taylor in her collegiate debut. A nice quick start off the line. A little change up shot, a short little bouncer there. I don't think Delaney Schweitzer even had an idea of where she was going with that. But the Wildcats are fired up. Kelly and Monty Hiller called her dynamic. Seen her do great things on offense and defense already. And she's been huge on the draw. Six draw controls, six possessions for your team. Six of Northwestern's 20 to just Syracuse's 11. And so here, if the camera zooms out and we can see, the Jenny Markey is not next to Madison Taylor. I don't love that because if she wins it right to her stick, she's off to the races, especially on the defensive end. I prefer to match feet. On the other side, Natalie Smith and Sammy White, shoulder to shoulder. Well, Jenny Markey was in the right place there, so what do I know? Doesn't really matter when Sam Smith wins it to herself. Mahoney scoops up the errant pass. Here come the Cats, four minutes to go. Season opener in the dome between two top five teams. The Wildcats ended the orange season a year ago. Izzy Skeen's first game back, six points for the Tawaritan finalist in 2021. Boykendall feeds the middle. White can't corral it. Big ground ball for Superior Clark. That is a big ground ball. She's got to have a plan of where to go with it. I thought that was a pretty clean check by Taylor. But it... Nonetheless, a huge stop for Syracuse. Orange 20 for 23 on clears. What else swerves from two? Back and forth she goes. Yeah, that's where the attackers, and Olivia Adamson did a great job of popping upfield and making herself known. But as an attacker, that's your job. You see the defenders with the ball in their stick, and you have to take that as a priority to get open and make yourself obvious. You might feel like you're open, but you have to make it obvious to them. And sometimes it's hard to see when you're under pressure. Petty play from the sophomore. Kayla Trainer directs traffic. One finger up. Shot clock down to 30. Tyrell to initiate. One-on-one -on -one with Carly Mahoney. Here comes Tyrell. Six points, spins back left. 15 to shoot. Off to the sister, it works! From the days at Mount Sinai High, now to the hill of Syracuse. Megan and Emma Tyrell keep on connecting. The younger one's got a hat trick, and the elder seven points. 
Megan Tyrell just has her head up immediately when she draws a slide and that she's drawing a slide every time she gets the ball. She has such an awareness and seems to always know which player she, uh, was the defender sliding from. And in this case, it's Emma Tyrell. And what did I say earlier? She plays big in big games. First game back, three goals and an assist. A hat trick against Northwestern in the 21 ACC NCAA tournament. Two assists to go along with it. And Emma Tyrell would shift back and forth from midfield, stepped up in the attack spot after Megan Carney went down against BC two years ago. And then just a casual six goals against Boston College. First game at attack. <laughs> There's Matt Smith matching feet with Emerson Bowling and Syracuse wins the draw control. It's important, it's just, you give yourself a 50-50 ball. I, I, I always preferred it that way because then you could box out, you could be a little physical. Only a couple possessions left, Syracuse up one. If you're Kayla Trainer, are you running the shot clock down again, just waiting for that moment to go? If I'm Kayla Trainer, I'm getting the ball to Meg Tyrell, <laughs> and I'm forcing a slide, because she seems to have no problem finding the open player today. Six assists for 18 in white and orange. 33 last year. 111 points. One of three players to have multiple 100-point seasons. One of them sitting to my right. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Here comes Tyrell, making history in the moment. Syracuse up two, 70 seconds to go. A statement game early on from Megan Tyrell. And that is just a big time play. You see here, they had her fully isolated on that side. The slide had to come across the crease. That is really difficult, and she was late. So Meg Tyrell has the awareness of where the slide is coming from, but she also knows she has the awareness of when she's got to shoot it herself, and she's fired up there. So Miss Calm and Collected seems pretty fired up. 8 points now for Megan Tyrell. What a way to start a towards and campaign. I think it's been quite a day for both returning Twarton finalists. It's been impressive and you can understand why they were honored over the past 2 years. Stain with 6 points in her own right, but now possessions paramount for the Cats. Down 2 with 70 seconds to go. Time out for either side. Mischewski and Smith. It's a race to it. And Taylor gets there first. It's a great ground ball by Taylor. And her seventh draw control. Already four goals. Feed to the front. Hanson can't corral it. A golden opportunity. Northwestern keeps it on that whistle. And that was a tough, uh, tough feed into L. Hansen. She was sort of running out of room as she, I don't know that she knew exactly where she was on the field. Northwestern's got to go quick. Quick, it'll net by three. Back check from Cockrell. 30 seconds, here comes Skane. Quick, it'll rips a bouncer. Wide left. Northwestern really needs something now. Skeen pass two. Underhanded score. Wow. Izzy Skeen has the answer. 14 seconds left, but that's time for a team that's dominating at the draw. Izzy Skeen just tucks underneath Coco Vandiver. And has the awareness that she's got to get a shot off before the slide can come. Coach Trainer's 
thinking, oh gosh, oh, how so do we close. stop her? Oh, so <laughs> close to grabbing that ground ball about 25 yards from Cage and just running away with the time. Officials are tapping their heads next to Kelly Amante Hiller. So both teams have a timeout. You can only call it if you have possession. Both potentially trying to get one off before the draw. With 14 seconds, if you're Northwestern, you win the draw. Are you calling timeout right away, or are you rushing the cage? I think it depends on the pressure. If there's a lot of pressure on the ball, obviously you want to be able to call that timeout to preserve the time. But if there's momentum going, I think just play it out. The score was 16-15 last year. This moment might resonate on the college lacrosse world. Big win for either side. Top five teams. Early ranking implications. Waddell next to Taylor on the right. Baxter and White battle on the left. Sammy White wins it. Goodale deflects the pass. It's still loose. Katie Goodale has it. Tyrell and Carney can run off the time. Syracuse wins in dramatic fashion. The Orange get revenge. Great game. 16-15 was the final last regular season in overtime. Only four goals for the Cuse in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Tournament. But this time, a triumphant return for Syracuse. This is what you hope for in a number four versus number five matchup. What a game, what a way to start the season for both teams, a hard fought game on both sides. Both teams have to be pretty pleased with this effort on positives and negatives, things to learn from moving forward. But luckily for both of them, there's three months before the end of May that they're both hoping to crack into the championship weekend again but what a way to get started they went neck and neck down the stretch Izzy Skane a triumphant return to lacrosse with seven points but Megan Tyrell did her one better with the game ceiling goal and eight total points for Alyssa Murray Cometti our producer behind the scenes Kristen Hennessy and everyone else on our ACC Network Extra crew I'm Ian Unsworth Thanks so much for tuning in. A great way to start off what should be a fantastic college women's lacrosse season.